Hello. So we're continuing further now, and uh, we're moving on to taxes. So the example says that suppose you're in Manitoba, uh, find a PST on sunglasses that cost fifteen dollars. So PST is a provincial sales tax. So first of all, you have to know the PST in Manitoba. So let's assume that the PST in Manitoba is 8%. I'm just going to decide to assume here. So it's 8%. So find the uh, PST on your sunglasses that cost $15. So I'm going to do 8% times $15. So, which is 8 over 100 and $15. And uh, so we can just plug this into our calculator. We can, we can plug in 8 times 15 divided by 100, or we can plug in 8 divided by 100, get the result, multiply by 15. So, there are different ways of doing this. So from my calculator, I can see here that uh, the provincial sales tax in Manitoba for a $15 sunglasses will be $1.20. Alright, so the next example says that So we have a uh, microwave costing $89.99 So it is 20% off So they're saying that calculate the discount so you want to buy the microwave the microwave is selling for $89.99 but then they're telling you that it is 20% uh, off so they want to they want you to figure out the amount of money that 20% discount represents so we're going to do 20% of $89.99. So this is going to be 20 over 100 times 89.99. So and also you can plug this into your calculator. You can do 20 times 89.99 divided by... One zero zero. So this is roughly eighteen dollars. So that means that if you want to buy this microwave uh, and it's twenty percent off, so that means they're going to take eighteen dollars off the uh, $89.99 that you're supposed to pay. Let's move on to B. So B says that calculate the sale price before taxes. So they want us to figure out the sale price. That is, they want us to figure out how much you will have to pay for the microwave before taxes. So basically, we have to subtract the discount from the overall uh, price. So the sale price is going to be $89.99 minus $18. So this is going to be $71.99. Well, I guess it's your lucky day because 
uh, 20% off. So instead of paying $89.99, you end up paying only $71.99. Now the next question is saying that calculate uh, the sale price including taxes. So until you pay for taxes, they're not going to allow you to just take the microwave away. So you still have to pay for your taxes. So uh, we're saying that the uh, the PSD. Hmm. Okay. So we have to know something, we have to know the location. Now the question is telling us that the location is Nunavut, which is uh, one of the territories in Canada. So they're saying sale, sale price with taxes. In Nunavut. So they want you to figure out uh, the sale price plus your taxes if you're buying it from Nunavut in Canada. Well, let's see. Now your sale price is only one ninety nine because you removed. The discount, you've taken out the 20% uh, off, sorry. So now we have to figure out um, the, uh, the taxes as well. Now, assume that the taxes in Nunavut is Actually, technically, it's not assumption because I, I checked on Google and uh, the tax in Nunavut is actually 5%. So, uh, we're going to do 5% of $71.99. We're going to get the tax amount and then we're going to add that on top of $71.99. So, that will give us our overall price. So, let me just do that one here for us. So five percent of seventy one ninety nine. So whatever that is, I'm gonna add that to seventy one ninety nine. So we're gonna get three dollars and sixty cents. So that's the amount of tax that will be paid in Nunavut for a $71.99 item. So we're going to add it on onto the, uh, the sale price. So we're going to get $75.59. $75.59. So the sale price including taxes is $75.59. Uh, Alright, so right now we're going to be moving on to the topic of ratios. So when we're talking about ratios, basically we're comparing an item to another item. And uh, we use the uh, colon to show that. So for example, uh, if I have two colon 3, that means 2 ratio 3, so that means I'm comparing this item or amount to this item or amount. So in many cases also, uh, we, we have equivalent, um, we can have uh, something that we're writing in ratios, we can also write it in fractions. So usually when we want to do that, or when we want to convert to fractions, we're going to take the first number on the left side of our ratio, that will be our numerator, and then the second number will be our denominator. So if we want to change this, into fraction is going to be 2 over 3.
So again, 2 ratio 3, we're comparing two things. This one is 2, this one is 3. And uh, we can also uh, convert it to fractions. The first number is on top. The second number to the right is on the bottom. And uh, we use the colon sign uh, for making this comparison. Let's look into some examples. The example says that write each part to whole ratio as a fraction. Write each part to whole ratio as a fraction. So like we were saying earlier on, so here we're comparing the 5 to the 8. So we're going to say uh, 5 divided by 8, or 5 over 8. So the one on the left goes on top, the one on the bottom, sorry, on the right goes on the bottom. That's that. And this one says that write each part to whole ratio as a uh, percent. So write this part to whole ratio as a percent. So they're telling us that this is part and this is whole. So they're telling us we're comparing this part to the whole. So that means that we're having a part of 19 out of a total or whole of 20. So part 19 out of total 20. So this time they want us to convert to percent. So before we can convert to percent, we must first com convert to fraction. So in order to convert this to fraction, we're going to take the one on the left, 19, which is the part, over the whole or the total, which is 20. So we've now converted to fraction. Now we have to take the next step by converting to uh, percent. And if we want to convert to percent, uh, we multiply by 100. So times 100, and then we solve. And this is, uh, uh, so we're gonna, so you can, you can do 19 times 100 over 20, and that will give us 95. But like we said earlier on, whenever you're converting to percent, you need to put the percent sign. And that is the percent sign. Now let's do one last question here. Alright, so uh, the question in case is that the ratio of t-shirts to shorts in James' closet is 5 ratio 2. So that means that in James' closet, we can find 5 t-shirts and two shorts. So write the ratio of t-shirts to the total number of garments. So well, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to say the total number of garments is going to be 5 plus 2, which is 7. So they want us to make up the ratio of t-shirts, which is 5, to the total. So the ratio is going to be 5 to the total. So 
So 5 ratio 7. B, write the ratio in part A as a percent. So write the ratio in part A as a percent. Uh, okay. So the ratio in part A is 5 ratio 7. So we have to convert to fraction first. So that will be 5 over 7. And now we have to convert to percent. So that will be times 100. And then we can just plug this into our calculator and see. So I'm going to do 5 times 100 equals divided by 7. That is 71.4%. All right, so uh, we have these other examples here to go through. So uh, the first one, write three equivalent ratios to each ratio. Well, we have just the one, so I'm just going to say to the ratio. So write three equivalent, that means the same or similar ratios to this particular ratio given. So if you want to write others that are similar, so you can just look for a particular number. If you multiply by both numbers here or divide, the result will always be similar. So they're kind of like common factors. So for one, I can just say, I'm going to multiply across the board by two. So I'm going to have 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, and that's 1. Another one I can de decide to, uh, I can decide to multiply by 5, let's say. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. And uh, for another one, you, you don't have to multiply, you can also divide. As long as whatever you're doing is the same. So I'm going to divide by 2. So 3 divided by 2 is 3 over 2. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So whatever you're deciding to multiply or divide, as long as you're doing it across the board, you're fine. The next one. In our hockey skills competition, Janine scored three uh, on five. Uh, Janine scored on, sorry, on three or five breakaways. Tonya scored on five of seven breakaways. Whose performance was better? To find out, write each ratio as a fraction. So write each ratio as a fraction. Well, let's see. For Denise, we're going to do a ratio of 3 to 5. So for Janice, I'm going to say J. So that will be 3 over 5. For Tonya, I'm going to say T. That will be 5 over 7. So I've written them as fractions. So the next thing I want to try and do now is in order for me to really see the differences, I'm going to convert them both to decimal. So this will allow me to really see the differences. So 3 divided by 5 in decimal I know is 0 0.6. And uh, 5 over 7 is 0 0.7. Or if we like, 0 0.71. So, as we can see, writing in decimal makes it very easy for me to see the difference. Now I can see that Tonya has a better percentage or a better decimal. Because 0 0.7 is bigger than 0 0.6. So, my result now about the better performance will be Tonya. 
So I'm going to say Plutonia has the better performance. And that is the end of that one. Now for the last one here, find t is 5 ratio t equals 15 ratio 36. So what we can do here is compare the first and the first as well as compare uh, t and uh, 36. So the second and the second. So whatever the factor in between must always be the same. So in order for us to go from 5 to 15, we can see that we have to multiply 5 by 3 to get 15. So that means we have to multiply t by 3 also to get 36. Maybe an, an easier way to do this is to say we have to divide 15 by 3 to get 5. That means we have to divide 36 by 3 to get t. So that means t is 36 divided by 3, which is 12. Because the question is asking us to find t. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. And uh, this brings us to the end of this session. So, thank you.